They'll be calling you a radical. A lot of stuff to talk about, about Fukushima. This is a study that Geneva sent me that I hadn't read through before. As people think, in the United States, they think, oh, the, the Fukushima tale hasn't been told. Obviously, there's no studies out there. There's been no marine biologists in the, the marine ecologists, no food experts. There's none of them been there. Because CNN didn't tell me, ABC didn't tell me, Reuters didn't tell me, BBC didn't tell me, CBF, Fox News didn't tell me, so it can't be. It's all over. Why is it all Europeans? Isn't it pretty crazy? Europe doesn't live on the rim of the Pacific Ocean. But they know that we're all tied together. And this is, I pledge allegiance to the United States under God, 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 because General Electric is God. Nuclearism is God. These people have names and addresses. I've read them over and over and over. Go to their fucking front of their house and protest. Right here. You read through this thing. Wow. Currently allowed in food. Well, let's go back here. The entire German population were to eat foods exposing individuals to only 5% of the contamination currently allowed in food imports from Japan. At least 7,700 fatalities could be expected. This figure doesn't even include the secondary consequences of a wide range of greatly varying diseases and genetic doses. Now remember, this study was done very early. I mean, I think everybody probably, even people like me, hypothesize and logic set in that at some point, the United States Army and the United States Navy, because TEPCO is the United States, because the United States Army and the United States Navy are the Queen's fleet. They are the Dragon Slayer. They are the Queen's fleet. As you pay the Dragon Slayer, at some point the Queen would have ordered her puppets to go in and clean this up. But then, even I thought that this would be entombed at some point. Now, people that say, "Oh, you know why?" I'm like, they don't. They don't know how to clean it. They have no clue. And to this asshole at Forbes who wrote this article, just dump it in there. As Dave Parrish says it best. By the way, Dave Parrish has been with me from day one. The people that have been from me day one, I've been on this from even before it happened. I have the. That's the beauty of YouTube. Proof, 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 proof. All you people that showed up now and whatever, oh, we love you and we need you. You want to help us? You know, help me. Support me. Help me in my fight. Help us. We do this for free. We do this for free. You know, we do this out of the good fight. You know, it's fight or die. As I run into this beautiful female that I used to date a few years ago, and she says, God, Kevin, where have you been? You know, there's been a bunch of people looking for you, and I says, I've been on an LDS mission. She about fell over. She says, what? Yeah. I says, I've been on a two-year LDS mission. What? Are you crazy? Really? And I says, yeah. I've been in the bone marrow transplant center at the top of LDS hospital. Fighting for my life full of leukemia. I'm in this fight. That's This vlog's morphed into so... This vlog, inceptually, and my work as an anti-nuclear advocate, my work as a humanitarian, my work as a socio-economist, as an artist, it all comes down to one common denominator. I'm a humanitarian. Always have been. I stand up and champion the causes. I can break all this down to tariffs, every single bit. Of, that's why we're going to walk to Hamilton's grave, because we need to start a new party. And the new party, you know, a guy told me, he says, it needs to be the Hamilton party. And I'm like, or the, you know, Hamilton Jefferson party. I think it needs to be the Washington party. I think we need to start a third party. The Washington Party. I want to say this to the writer who wrote the Huffington Post yesterday, Green, about the sockeye salmon, and I'll show it. First, this is what I want to help you identify what shills are. What a shill is. Now, some of them are just blatant in your face, like the guy from Fork. Good shills are very subtle. Now, this is the exact argument I had with Arnie Gunderson in the early days. He was coming to my side early. Kevin, because I'm calling it a nuclear blast and a nuclear meltdown, just exactly what it was. That's exactly what it was. Read this line she put in there. From the hydrogen blast. Gunderson, for weeks, she was from the hydrogen blast. Jim Walls, from the hydrogen blast. Anderson Cooper, from the hydrogen blast. Sanjay Gupta, from the hydrogen blast. All of them, from the hydrogen blast. Where the fuck do they get off? We all know what hydrogen is. 
I think, you know, we, we learned that in the third, fourth fucking grade. This isn't a fucking hydrogen blast. Never fucking was. This is the greatest catastrophe in the history of fucking humanity. The Pacific, the Pacific genocide is very, very real. Look, the guy tells me up in the fishery, who I trust very much a long time ago, burns on the fucking northern cod coming in. The fish that was caught with 2,500 times in it, out in the water. The, the, the Pacific's not a bathtub. This is fucking horrific. I, you know, the Pacific genocide is evil. But the plume, plume gay, as Tony calls it, it's rained over. So I want people to remember this as far as activists. You know, you want the experts in the world? Shane Russell. There isn't nobody expert like him. This guy is the hardcore investigative journalist. And remember this, he was there from day one. As I was there from day one. The small, teeny, teeny. He and I were reporting this and doing the work, saying this is a full court meltdown. Nobody reported this for as a full court meltdown for a long, long time. We reported in detail from day one. Tony, his beautiful work on Blue Gate is powerful. We do the work. You wouldn't believe the hours of investigative journalism we do. I get, and I've built my network. Is that's how investigative journalists work. My network's been built as I have sources. That's what old school journalism was: was building up your credibility and building up your sources. You wouldn't believe what I get a day. You guys think you're gonna slide something back you shields through? You ain't getting nothing by us. Our army is fucking on you. We've always been on to Greenpeace, the Sierra Club, as your fucking grandson. I got in a fight on. The pier down there with Greenpeace and, and uh, Pacific Beach last month, and they're saying you're raising your voice, you're raising your voices. There's no fucking noise ordinance here. Look at the fucking you raising. I says I remember when you fucks used to raise your voice. Now you just collect money because they've all fallen for it. It's the whole gig. This is stop with this fucking looting down now. The salmon. Okay, she says it right here. Everybody's saying it, talking about what's happened to the salmon run so dramatically this year last year. Oh, same thing that happened to the sea lions. And the marine biologists, the marine ecologists, they all the same thing. We're just looking for funny. But there's people in those departments. I mean, all they have to, and I would say this to you people that protested at Pilgrim, right on. I love you guys. Sam, all of you, thank you. I love you. To the Japanese mom in that area who's organizing, I love you. I love all of you guys so much. Where's your YouTube cameras? Come on, I've been looking on one to see that protest out there on the bridge. I'm like, somebody's got to have it. Come on, your video camera, come on. I mean, the old days of freaking doing a protest, beating a freaking drum, and calling the media and hoping they show up, they're fucking gone with the fucking wagon wheel. Please, please. This is fucking protest right here, right now. Where's your YouTube cameras? All of you, come on. Come on, post them up. Send them to me. Send them to Jan. Send them to any of We'll mix them. We'll get them up. To the artist, you're starting to show up. Thomas Ackerman's work, you know, take a look at his work. He's been painting in this from before it even happened. This is a hardcore, powerful, real grassroots movement that is working. This is working. I'm fighting for my life. And, you know, as she says, I can't believe that. And I said, well, this hospital is Danish philosophy medicine. It's a rock star named freaking the Rockstar. We have a billboard of him named Fimbo Peters from Denmark who organizes Julie Ash, freaking these incredible, magnificent, brilliant, genius group of doctors. And this group of PAs. It's a team effort. They say my life. I had no chance. I mean I had to, I had no chance. I got I was wiped out so fast and it was my knowledge, as you know, over and over and over. One of the PAs comes into me when I was so shriveled up and sick in December of twenty eleven or January twenty. It was right in there's oh I mean I was I thought I was going to go that day. And they quarantine you in there, so your family doesn't... The only people you get to identify really is with the maids. And I made very good friends with the maids. I remember she comes in and says, God, what a conversation you're having with the maid, because the maids were from Nepal. And I says, yeah, do you know anything? No, you know, because we stereotype people. I don't stereotype anyone, except for the hairsprayed newscast and fake fucking Christians. Oh, I stereotype those fuckers, those pieces of dog shit. He says, I was a school teacher in Nepal, and I wanted a better life in America. So I came here, and he was really disillusioned, obviously. He says, I've been a mate. I clean freaking rooms. He says, when I was a school teacher in Nepal, I was like these doctors are here. That's how well, I was respected there. I says, it used to be that way in America. Teachers and activists and, you know, Sarah Jane Adams. Where are you girls? Come on. They used to be the people that were respected. People that fought these good fights and took on these causes in the face of adversity. 
That's what America is. That's what America has always been. We, there's nothing more American than fighting back against tyranny and nuclearism and the Queen as when we, the day we got rid of tariffs as the Newt Gingrich's contract on America, the GOP, they, the progressives had Congress for how many years? The first day they got it back after 40, 50 years. The GOP, first thing they did is they kidnapped that fucking party. They're the Queen Party. They're the party of the Queen. The GOP is the party of the Queen. They're BP. They're the royal party. The GOP, the Republicans need to change. And the Democrats need to change theirs to the butterflies. You know, the hair clay for men and the butterflies. The first thing they did, NAFTA. NAFTA was the dagger that slaughtered. And Bill, the Queen, Kiss the Queen, the greatest Republican of all time, signed it. That's when this whole nightmare started, the deregging public commissions, no oversights on anything, including nuclear reactors. Now, would Fukushima still happen? Oh yeah, but the nuclear industry told us Chernobyl couldn't happen, Fukushima couldn't happen. To the marine biologists, to the so-called scientists, to all of you fucks in the United States, all of you are a bunch of fucking titles. And you're, I, I love it, you think your money, and you think people look up to you, they look down on you. Fuck you. Stay on tuned.